one. And now, here's your host. Welcome back to the program. I'm um, Zev Brenner with us right now is Naomi Reinhardt, the Chief Development Officer of the American Israel. That's the America Israel Friendship League. They've been around for a long time. They do some very important work in the Jewish community, bolstering the American Israeli friendship. Naomi has been is an attorney, but she is a professional and lay leader in major global Jewish and pro Israel organizations, including working with ORT and Next Generation and uh, also with American Jewish Committee, Hebrew Immigrant Aid Society. Welcome to the program. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. So I was going to ask you, what do you enjoy more, Jewish communal life or, or the legal world? Because I know you were a lawyer. Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have left the legal world if I liked <laughs> that better than what I do now. <laughs> I find most lawyers <laughs> like to do other things aside from law. Well, I shouldn't say most, but a lot of lawyers tend to do that. I, People, people like to call me a recovering attorney, but I'll, I say I've, I've fully recovered by now. So, <laughs> well, Jewish organizations, but Jewish organizations have their own set of challenges, right? It's uh, we're blessed with so many different Jewish groups today. I know. I mean, you know, they say two Jews, three synagogues, or two Jews, three organizations. We like to create organizations. We like to each have our own niche in this world. And I think, you know, one of the great things about us is we're always creating and building and coming up with new important missions to to work on behalf of. So American Israel Friendship has been around for a while, a long time, but I'm sure a lot of people may not be aware of the day-to-day operations. What are some of the things that you do? So let's share with our audience what the organization does. Yeah, we are a 51-year-old organization. We were founded in 1971. Um, We're quite small in terms of size and budget, but we accomplish a lot, I think, with very few resources. Um, Our first ever program was something called YASI, Youth Ambassador Student Exchange, which still exists to this day and is actually um, going back to Israel this year after a a two-and-a-half-year hiatus with COVID. Uh, We send all sorts of groups of people to Israel throughout the year from high school students to attorneys general and um, everything in between. Uh, We just completed a successful uh, delegation, for instance, of Hispanic leaders from around the U.S. So we're really thrilled with that. Wow, that's amazing. It's important to build bridges when they go back and they come back with a different opinion of it. What's the criteria for sending, let's say, some of the Jewish students to Israel? Is it like a birthright if they've never been there before, or do you use other uh, means of trying to get people to go? It's actually not a Jewish delegation, and we're not even actually a Jewish organization. So most of the people that we send to Israel are not Jewish. Um, some of them are, but we that's not one of the criteria for sending people to Israel. We simply want people to come with us to Israel who have a desire to learn more and who are interested in learning about the country, seeing the country, And with every single delegation that we send, um, we do a lot of data, both before and after, and we always see a transformative experience for all of our delegates from knowing, you know, quite little about Israel to begin with and having um, sort of lukewarm opinions about the country sometimes to really falling in love with the country and saying it was one of the best experiences of their lives. I'm sure it must have a lot of interesting people that have gone through over the last 51 years through the American Israel Friendship League uh, to Israel, uh, so yes. and with COVID, you know, gone. So now you're back in business, so to speak. Exactly, we're really thrilled. It's sort of good things come to those who wait, you know. And <laughs> we have waited, like so many organizations out there, um, and we're just so happy to be to be, you know, back in business again. So tell tell us, you know, sending people to Israel costs money with inflation. I'm sure the since the last time you sent people to Israel before COVID. Yeah. The price of airlines, the tickets have gone up, accommodations and hotels have gone up. Everything has gone up, so it costs more money. So who's funding the organization? Um, of course, the prices are going up, unfortunately, but that, I guess such is life. So we do the best that we can. We try to keep costs to a minimum. We try to keep our budgets low and not spend you know, on extravagant or unnecessary things. Every single delegation that we send we tailor to the people that we're sending. No two delegations, no two trips are the same. Give us an example yeah. of what that means. Um, you know, for instance, if we're sending um, people to Israel who are who are largely Catholic, um, who have a religion that, you know, they would really benefit by seeing Christian sites in Israel or meeting with fellow Hispanic, you know, colleagues in Israel, um, Hispanic Jews or non-Jews who live in Israel. Um, attorneys general, we have them meet with members of Knesset and, and other diplomats and politicians. So every group, we really try to be cognizant of who these people are 
and what their interests might be. Um, again, our costs are not very high. My job as Chief Development Officer, obviously, is to make sure every dollar is covered. Um, obviously, I wasn't raising money for the last couple years due to COVID for our delegations. Now, I'm very much so focused on raising money for these delegations. We have a wonderful partner in the Israeli Ministry of Foreign Affairs that does support us, along with many other foundations and individuals throughout the United States. So I guess one of the things you have to do is fundraise. <laughs> Of course, always fundraising. Always, right, always, never, always, never, 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 never stop, never stop fundraising. Right? No organization exists without constant fundraising. Every and, every nonprofit in the world needs to raise money. So you tell me, so, fundraising is you enjoy that more than being a lawyer? I love it. I'm I'm a rare person who actually loves raising money, and that's weird, very strange. Hey, but I, I love it. I don't get tired of it. Now, when you've been with so many different Jewish groups, they're all looking for fundraisers. <laughs> I get calls every day from organizations looking for fundraising. It's just, and, and non-Jewish groups, everyone, everyone needs to raise money. And like you said, with costs going up around the world, it's it's more important than ever to be raising money. Now, what, speaking of fundraising, you have a fundraising event, a uh, big gala coming up on November 7th. So tell us about <laughs> November, before you know it, it's going to be November 7th. So it's not too early to start talking about it, right? I know. I feel like, you know, the day after our gala last year, we immediately started working on this year's gala. Um, it is a longstanding event. It's a wonderful event that I'm very honored and proud to be a part of. It's called the Partners for Democracy Awards Gala. Like you said, it's taking place Monday, November 7th, 6 p.m. at the Pierre Hotel in New York City. Um, it's a really beautiful, exciting, lovely event. We always have amazing honorees. We sell out the room, um, whether it's at the Plaza Hotel, at the Pierre Hotel, or wherever it may be. 2020 was the only time we did it fully virtual. Um, this past year, um, 2021, was our 50th anniversary gala where we were pleased to be honoring President George W. Bush and President Reuben Rivlin, and this year we have other exciting honorees as well. Oh, I was at the event with the President uh, Bush. It was, a, it was a really nice event. Thank you. I'm so glad you could join us. Terrific, you know, it's, uh, which is great. It's, he doesn't go to that many Jewish events, so that's what made it the very special. He was he was charming. He was funny. He was open, um, and he I think, you know, really played off well with with President Rivlin, and the, the guests had a wonderful time. That's terrific. So, so this is, I, and I think people are hungry to go back to events, live events, as opposed to the virtual events. People are zoomed out of, of that, so they really want to go see people face to face. I agree. I mean, we were we were a little hesitant, you know, leading up to the event, and as Omicron and other variants were coming out, and certain events with other organizations were unfortunately being canceled or having to go um, virtual. We were we were considering all options. Uh, we did offer a hybrid option for those who didn't feel comfortable traveling or who could not travel to New York for the event. Um, so some people did watch um, on Zoom, um, but the vast majority of the people um, came live. We didn't hear of anyone getting sick, and we hope the same is true this year. So, Naomi, if people want to get more information about the America-Israel Friendship League, how can they do so? They can contact me. Um, my email is naomi.reinhardts at AIFL.org. They can go to our website, which is AIFL.org. Um, to learn more about our gala in New York, they can go to AIFL.org slash partners dash four dash democracy. Um, slash and um, you know we have a lot of information online we send out emails and we're pretty active on social media so it's it's not hard to find us Naomi Reinhardt Chief Development Officer of the American Israel Friendship League thank you for joining us thanks so much for having me it's great to talk to you my name is Jacob Abilevich 